This is my portable red Komodo setup. And in today's video, I wanna discuss why I've moved back to the Komodo. Now, if this is your first time here on the channel, welcome, my name's Jeff Fagan. I'm a filmmaker, DP, and a content creator. So last year, I sold my red Komodo. I made a video about it. A lot of people thought I was upgrading to the X. And as you can see by now, no, I didn't upgrade to the X. Although I've used the Komodo X quite a few times, and I really do like it. Some of the reasons I didn't upgrade to the X have to do with, although it's very similar in size, you still have to use V-mount batteries on the X versus the BP on the Komodo. And I do a lot of gimbal work. Using the BP batteries on the Komodo, I'm just able to have a much smaller profile than on the X, and I don't really need the slow motion. You get pretty much double the frame rate at every resolution, so 6K 80, 4K 120, stuff like that where I don't really need it. I pretty much film in 24p all the time. So for me, those features really weren't enough to make me upgrade, especially when I knew the Komodo was overkill for me most of the time anyways. I don't always need 6K. I don't always need R3D Red Code Raw. And sometimes using the Komodo between the startup time and if anything happens customer service wise, it's just more of a hassle than it's worth. I'll get to the customer service stuff later. Over the past few years, I've leaned more into content creation and it's why in 2023, I ended up selling my Stormtrooper model of the Red Komodo just because I wasn't using it as much and I knew my outlook over the next year or so and I realized I just wasn't gonna use it that much and I decided to keep some of my accessories for the Komodo and just rent it for the few shoots I had the rest of the year and put the money towards some expenses that came up. But I always knew I was going to be coming back to the Komodo, just didn't know when. Some of the other reasons have to do with the color. I had the white Stormtrooper edition and this is the regular black one. I actually like the black version more because it's just not as flashy. One of the things I like to do is have these super small setups and go out and use this as I would a regular camera. And with the white version of the Komodo, I just wasn't really able to. I got a lot of eyes everywhere. A lot of people just caught on that it was kind of a professional big looking camera, even when I had even smaller setups than this. And so I really only started to use the Komodo on more professional gigs. I really didn't use it as a hobby camera. And I had this thought in my mind for a while that I always wanted to kind of side grade from the Stormtrooper to the regular black one. I mean, there's no difference in the image quality. It's pretty much the exact same camera. As I was shooting some of my more higher end gigs towards the end of 2023 and the beginning of this year in 2024, having to rent Komodos, after renting them a few times, I just decided to get back into it because using the Komodo X and some of the higher end red cameras like the V-Raptor, made me really reconsider where I sat in Red's ecosystem. And it's that I don't use the Red all the time. I'm really primarily a Sony shooter at this point. I shoot a lot with the FX30 and the a7 IV, and those aren't the most expensive Sony cameras either, but they do the job and I make a lot more money for the gear that I'm using compared to using something like the Komodo. But the Komodo is overall the cheapest camera in Red's ecosystem. So for someone like me who doesn't use the Red all the time, but use it enough at least now, to make money with it throughout the year, the Komodo makes the most sense for me. When I look at how I wanna price out gigs, the Komodo works with a lot of my client work that want the red look, but don't need the slow motion. So I can pass off the savings to them. I can also make more when using the red, whereas using something like the Komodo X or the V-Raptor for my line of work, even on the narrative side, I really wouldn't make much more, even though it's clear there is better image quality on those cameras over the Komodo. How much more, for me, doesn't really make a difference. When I need to use the Komodo, I'm lighting everything. When I'm using the Komodo for more fun or run and gun work, yeah, using the higher end red cameras, the image quality will become more apparent, at least the difference in the image quality. But when I'm lighting my image, which like I said, is what I'm doing most of the time when I'm using the Komodo, I don't really see the image quality difference. So moving up to a Komodo X for a small image quality difference or the V-Raptor for a bigger image quality difference, even the V-Raptor X that has the global shutter, for me specifically, it just doesn't make a difference. Now, if you're in high-end production, yes, I can see why you'd wanna have a higher-end RED camera. You're gonna make more as a camera operator or renting out your camera in general. In South Florida, there really isn't as much of a demand for RED cameras. It's really more when I travel that there's a demand for RED cameras in my line of work. As I said earlier, I'm doing mostly content creation at this point, and pretty much all of it involves video. 
But for that, using some of my Sony gear just makes a lot more sense to get up and get going. But occasionally, I can use the RED, especially if I want things to look just a little bit better. If I need to be able to film in RAW or I need the higher resolution like 6K footage, the RED is definitely a clear winner in that department. For some of the weddings I shot on the RED, it was a lot easier to use my phone as the actual monitor instead of having a monitor on the side hooking up SDIs to the camera and just eliminated using a lot of wires. And I found that I was able to pull focus with manual lenses like the 35 millimeter version of this Saray Anamorphic really easily, especially with the phone. I really don't get a crazy amount of lag on the interface, but it also depends on where you're at. There are times where I've tried to use the phone as a monitor and I just had way too much Wi-Fi interference. So that's why you can't really rely on the phone as being your all-time monitor. You just don't know if you're gonna get interference or not. It's where the link adapter comes into play, but in situations where I need to use the link adapter, most of those are in more professional gig type scenarios, where at that point I'd rather just use an external monitor. But when I'm out here and I'm just trying to film some nature stuff, just really more filming for fun, at that point I'd rather just use either my phone as a monitor or the built-in monitor if I'm using autofocus, or I'm in situations where I can actually just use peaking to make sure that I have everything in focus. For those of you who love Blackmagic, I've used the original Komodo with the Pocket 6K quite a few times, and the image quality difference really isn't as far as you would think. The director on one of my projects actually confused the footage between both cameras because when looking at the B-RAW files from the Pocket 6K and looking at the R3D files from the RED footage when he was just looking at them without any color grades, they both have really great images. It's part of the reason why when I first got the Komodo, I ended up running a Komodo in kept using my Blackmagic cameras because I noticed how close the image was. As I started doing more content creation, as you can imagine, I just got rid of the Blackmagic cameras and kind of turned that budget into, at first, Canon cameras, and then I switched over to Sony just because they have a little bit more frame rate resolution options. Now let's talk about customer service. There's kind of reviews all over the place about customer service from RED, and I'm just gonna be blunt. I haven't had the best customer service experience, but I haven't had the worst customer experience. I had an issue using my Stormtrooper camera, and it really wasn't the biggest issue, but after a firmware update, I had some issues where the image wasn't showing up properly on both the LCD screen and the external monitor, and every time I would reboot the camera, it would fix it, but they wanted me to send my camera in. I sent my camera in for around a month and I didn't hear anything. And so I ended up reaching out to them because I started losing gigs. And they basically said, hey, we don't have the part to fix your camera, uh, so we're gonna hold on to it. And I'm like, no, my camera's perfectly usable. I really need you guys to just send this back. Now to their credit, once I said that and had that conversation with them, they sent the camera back right away. But one of the things I noticed is they did work on my Stormtrooper camera. For instance, in the SDI port, they fixed some of the issues. I guess they didn't put as much isolation or something. There was something in the SDI port that wasn't in the SDI port when I first got the Stormtrooper version of the Komodo. Now, I get it. I got a beta camera, so I was kind of expecting that. But there were other issues, like the camera came back slightly scratched, and the white Stormtroopers scratch a lot easier. And I really just didn't like that. I didn't like that. I sent the camera off to Red, of all people, and I got the camera back scratched. Now, eventually, they didn't even reach out to me. I had to check in with them a few months later to see if they had the parts to fix the camera. I paid for shipping, I sent it out, and they fixed the camera and sent it back. They did try to touch up the scratches as I discussed with them what happened and why I was unhappy. They did an okay job fixing the scratches. It wasn't perfect, but it is what it is. But after that point, I just realized, you know, there has to be some truth to the customer service issues. I actually think with the Komodo for Red, they expanded their company so much as far as customers that they weren't necessarily prepared for the amount of customer service they were going to have to do, especially with the camera at that price point compared to the other cameras they've been selling. But it did put me off a little bit. Now, you may be wondering after that, if I was put off, why would I even get another Komodo? And it's really because I love the image quality out of the Komodo, even though it's, in the end, not much better than the higher-end mirrorless cameras. I find my a7 IV is really close in its full-frame mode to the image quality of the Komodo. 
but those cameras just don't come close to the codec you get when dealing with R3D. The R3D codec is just absolutely fantastic. And when working on some higher end projects, especially with editors that are used to R3D footage versus using S-Log3 H.265 footage, they just want to deal with the R3D. They prefer to deal with the R3D and they rather pay more for that. So I decided to just come back to the Red ecosystem. As of now, I haven't really sold anything other than I sold one of my FX30s. So I'm still rocking an FX30. I'm still rocking the A7 IV. Now, if you have any questions about the Red Komodo content you wanna see on the Komodo, now that it's back for Reach Films in some of my projects, make sure to ask in the comments below. If you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you as always for watching watching and I will catch you in the next video.